Hi. <laughs> Hello, friends and colleagues. Or oh, maybe being in Austin, I could say, Hody partners. Did I say it correct? <laughs> Hody, Hoody, Howdy. Howdy partners. Okay. For partners, we truly are Christians and Jews, conservatives and liberal, coming together and advance the special relationship between the state of Texas and the state of Israel. This relationship may seem surprising to some. Israel is a long way away, 7,000 miles away in a different hemisphere. Texas is huge. It could fit 30 Israels inside it and still have room for more. And while you Texans and the rest of this great United States are blessed with peace, my Israel must fight each and every day to survive and still manages to thrive. But look closer and you will find that Israelis and Texans have a deep affinity. It runs deeper than business, though commercial ties between Texas and Israel are truly booming. And it even runs deeper than basketball, though my family are huge fans of the Dallas Maverick. It is a matter of shared spirit. Like the Lone Star State, Israel too is symbolized by a star, the Star of David, named after the most famous of Jewish kings in the Bible. Like Texans, Israelis cherish their roots and their religion and their rights. Like Texans, Israel defends their sovereignty. Like Texans, Israel stick to their guns and stand up for their principles and don't give a damn if that means standing alone. The nickname of a native-born Israeli like me is Sabra, which is the Hebrew for the cactus fruit. I gather that you Texan also know a thing or two about cactus plants. And like the Sabra, you too can be prickly on the outside, but always sweet within. That's because Texans have hearts as big as the Texas plains. You are generous people. You were forged on the frontier. So you reach out to help others for whom the road is rough and the times are tough. We Israelis are also big hearted people, my friends, but our hearts are broken. On October 7, exactly two months ago, they were shattered by an enormous evil. That sunny morning was Simchat Torah, the Jewish celebration of the God scripture. But what Israel got that morning was hell. Thousands of Palestinian infiltrators led by hundreds of heavily armed Hamas terrorists smashing through the border from Gaza to carry out an orgy of killing and kidnapping. Two months later, we are still learning about the extent of the horrors of children murdered in front of the parents. And parents 
murdered in front of their children, of entire family burned alive in their homes as they prayed and cried out for help that would come too late, of innocent young people having a good time at an outdoor party until they were hunted down and butchered like animals, of a baby beheaded and another baby baked to death in an oven, and another ripped from the womb of a slaughter mother and beheaded, of women raped either while still alive or in a final humility after they were already bloody corpse. Many of the victims were incinerated to the point that their loved ones did not even know they were among the dead. Until days or weeks later, Israeli forensic expert managed to identify a bit of bone. The unbelievable genocide cruelty unleashed by Hamas on Israel that they was kind of second Holocaust events. I was there in one of the destroyed commun community called Near Oz. I left with ash on my shoes from the remains of a family home, from the remains of the family. I put those shoes aside, preserving them as a testament to what happened. And then I put on new shoes and went to work. Because unlike during World War II, the Jews are not helpless now. We have a state and an army, and for the last 10 weeks, we have been waging a righteous war in Gaza to ensure October 7 never recur. We will win, of course. We have no choice. And of course, God is on our side. But this road is rough. These times are so tough and look likely to get tougher still. In addition to the 1,200 innocent men, women, and children, we lost to Hamas, to Hamas massacre on October 7, scores of brave Israeli soldiers have fallen in battle. More than 130 of our people are still hostage in Gaza, suffering God knows what at the hands of Hamas monsters. 200,000 Israelis had to flee rocket fire on the towns and villages. No one knows when they might go back. But friends, Israelis can endure all of this. We will honor our dead, tend to our wounded, and rebuild our beloved land. What is in some ways harder to deal with has been our betrayal by some in the West, including right here in America. They are on the fringes, but still, the sight of thousands of people in some US cities marching against Israel has been terrible. In per capita terms, what Israel suffered on October 7 was like 29-11. And while the United States retaliated for 9-11 by going to war on the other side of the world, Israel war is right next door with rockets continuing to fall on it, on its citizens and captives are inside Gaza Strip. The majority of Americans understand this. The majority of Americans knows that 
in Israel position, they will do at least the same as it is doing, and maybe more. But at this critical time for Israel, at this critical time for the contest between good and evil, between God and devil, this support must be loud and clear. And nowhere, nowhere has it been more so than right here in Texas among decent folks like such as yourselves. From the top office of my dear friend, Governor Abbott, and all the way down to ordinary church goers and campaigners, Texans have turned out for Israel. Flags across the strait flew at half mast for Israeli victims of Hamas. Texan Jews has been made to feel embraced with special funding providing to protect their synagogue and schools. And Austin has made clear it will do no business with Gaza as long as it's under terrorist control. You, ladies and gentlemen, have also played your part by investing in Israel. You know that Israel's rich past, the fact that it is the realization of God's promise in the Bible thousands of years ago, is matched only by its limitless potential. And you know that, to paraphrase Genesis 12, those who bless Israel will be blessed. But here and now, it is I who feel blessed. This daughter of Israel, this proud US dual citizen, feel privileged to have been brought into the great state of Texas too. This friend of Texas feels like she is among more than friends. It feels like family. So thank you again. May we meet again and in happier time. And may Israel and Texas only go from strength to strength. Thank you.